Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Get a gun. Hello and welcome to episode 176 of Slam Fire Radio for October 14th, 2016. I am one of your hosts, Trevor the Frelate. I'm another one of your hosts, Matthew the Warning Shot. And I'm Adriel the Hunting Gear Guy. And I'm Kelly Lynn. Well, no Nick <laughs> Kelly for you, huh? Kelly, if we give our nicknames, you give your nickname. If we don't, you don't. This is a thing we've been doing for literally months now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to keep up. And Adriel, you're frosty, by the way. So, okay. now that I've berated my co-host and sound like a douche, Matthew, what have you done this week in guns? <laughs> uh, I went hunting. Did? Yep. Now, was this hunting or was this armed hiking? We actually went hunting, but it ended up just being armed hiking. We hmm. tried. We actually tried, but it didn't I, work out. That's into Yeah, I've got an int- Yeah, okay, good. Keep going. So, that's- we we actually we flushed one bird. We we're, we're going after grouse. It was, this is Matt and I. Um, yeah. So we did flush one, and uh, we, as soon as he flew, we did the right thing. We froze, and we uh, very slowly and carefully advanced and went through the woods because usually, or at least sometimes, there's a second or third bird there. And so we very carefully went through the area and made sure that it was clear, and it was, unfortunately. <laughs> so no bird there. <laughs> uh, so we, we continued on, and like I said, we were doing this right. We weren't talking and yakking the whole time trevor would that have been happy I find hard to believe we really weren't we Good were going man. very I'm, I'm impressed and proud yeah we were going you know heel toe nice and sloth sloft sloft and slowly <laughs> like a sloth got it i yep. know that move and uh you know we like i said we did we did get one flush and then on the way back uh matt actually saw another one and it took off uh it was probably I don't know, 75, 80 yards down the trail. So he, he took off and flew off into the woods. And so we sort of chased him for, didn't chase him, but we went after him a little bit. But uh, we didn't see any sight of him after that. So it, it wasn't successful in the sense that we actually harvested anything. But we did actually try hunting for reals and, uh, you know, saw some birds. And it was really windy when we went. And I don't know if people know this, but grouse get really skittish when it's windy and they... It, it's just hard to, it's a lot harder when it's windy to get to sneak up on them and to get them. So, but we did, we had a good time anyway, but, uh, that, that's basically all we did. We went, <laughs> we went to the gun shop and bought our licenses and went hunting. And while we were there, realized that we can buy our licenses online after standing in line behind about 20 people mm. who all didn't realize the same thing we did. So yeah, next year we're just going to print our licenses off at home on the computer before we go out. But, uh, yeah. but yeah. I gotta do the same. I gotta do the same thing. I went hunting today, but didn't have a license, so I was, I was the, uh, uh, the chauffeur. If you oh, will. you were the chauffeur. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, you know what? As long as you don't have a gun, that's allowed. You're allowed to be out in the woods with hunters if you don't have a license. So yeah, that's absolutely. Cool. Yeah. We only had one firearm with us. I mean, yeah, so. so you're good to go. But so yeah, well, why don't we just you just keep right on going because I'm I'm done with what I did. Okay, so I did some bullet casting uh, on two separate occasions last week. It was uh, we had some days here that hit in the uh, twenty plus range, so I went out on the uh, back deck and I probably casted close to two thousand nine mil and then started powder coating. Um, but this is only because I'm I'm trading them with somebody for something else. Otherwise, I can't be bothered to cast my own ammunition anymore. Like it's like ten hours before you have a thousand bullets done from probably wheel weight to finish bullet ready to load so yeah, that's a lot of time i mean it's really cheap and it the process is sort of fun it's an enjoyable process but it's not really it's not like you don't have anything else to do right yeah no it is and you're right it's very cheap but nine mil is not you know i definitely do it for the 40 yeah um but you know uh x mil targets um i get a uh dealer cost or something like that through X Metal as being sponsored by them. So basically it turns out to be free shipping is what right. it works out to be. So um, speaking of X Metal, I received um, some bullets from them this week along with my two um, 
staff shirts. They are awesome shirts. They're made by a company, and I don't have the name with me. Maybe I'll bring it up next week, but they're a company that I've not seen before. comes with a cool decal, but then I'm looking at Ipsic matches online, and I'm seeing that brand of shooting shirt. Um, it seems to be quite popular overseas. Um, real nice. It's that dry dry weave material that most of the team shirts are made out of. Um, so when I order, I, I wear an extra large and he sent me a uh, double XL and I'm like, double XL, I'll be swimming in the, oh, no, not swimming at all. I probably could have got a triple XL. They're a little snug. <laughs> so, but you know, they're uh, awesome. Shirts. That's the shirt though, right? Not you. Yeah. That's yeah. well, it's, uh, we're, yeah. bo- we're both contributing to this appearance thing right. here. This problem. <laughs> which uh, which shirt was that? That's uh, my X Men. Uh, yeah, I didn't catch the name, or I don't have the name committed to memory yet. Um, mm-hmm. But they, I will. Uh, I'll post it, to, or I'll I'll know it. I'll have it for next week because they are really nice shooting shirts. And if you're looking to have some made, Adriel, for your club or whatever, um, Frank Nardi from CRFAM in Montreal. He's the guy I'm going to be going to to get our next club shirt made. We were getting them done by Techwear in the United States, but they're expensive to begin with, and the dollar is killing us right now. So Frank mm-hmm. Nardi made our last team shirts for the Nationals for Team New Brunswick at this year's Ipswich Nationals, and they're they're fantastic. They're every bit as good as Techwear, so and a fraction of the cost, like almost half. So, uh, what else did I do? I uh, well, I was a week ago today. The reason why I wasn't on the show last week is because I had my right wrist operated on for carpal tunnel and so there's a match this weekend and i want to shoot it because i haven't shot for a while so i set up a left-handed rig so it's important to be able to use both hands because you never know so i'm going to go shoot a match with my glock um, 17 i reverse the mag catch on it for left-handed cr speed mag pouches are reversible so i switch them all over to left and i had an old cr speed holster here that has brass inserts into the body of the um, holster, but the the holes didn't go all the way through to the other side. And I thought it was as simple as just putting on the drill press and opening up the holes on the opposite side. And sure enough, <laughs> I now have a left-handed Sierra Speed holster. The cool. bolts, yeah. So there's a brass insert that goes all the way through, but they just don't open up the hole on one side. Now the lock to lock the holster normally is on the outside of the holster, but now it's on the inside, but that's fine because all my ghost race holsters, the lock is on the inside, so whatever. So I'm going to go shoot a match on Saturday with my left hand. Um, That'll be fun. I'm left eye dominant. I've been doing some dry fire practice off and on for the last week, just, you know, with my left hand to try and make sure the sight doesn't move when I press the trigger with my left finger to kind of get a little muscle memory going. Um, I'm not sure if any of the guys know that... uh, Greg listens to the show, so maybe Greg will be tipped off, but I'm not telling anybody that I'm going there shooting left-handed. I'm just going to show up with a left-handed gun on and see if somebody notices. See if anyone, yeah, that'd be kind of funny if you won. <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of hoping. <laughs> so and then naturally, it depends who shows up, right? So, right. Yeah. Uh, and then we had our monthly gun club meeting last night where we discussed uh, turning our 500-meter uh, range into an actual 600 meter range because we call it a 500 meter range but in fact it's closer to like 580 so um, some guys wanted to make a proposal about moving this and moving that so I asked them to kind of form a little subcommittee go out there and get us an accurate measurement and, and I mean don't just use a trundle wheel and walk down the range because that's not accurate you need a line of sight measurement to be 100% sure that we have Six, the potential to build a 600 meter range there. If we do good, then we'll start spending money and making it happen, which is what we should have done in the first place. But it's like, imagine a non Ipsic shooter setting up an Ipsic match. Well, this is kind of what happened. The guys that set up our rifle range aren't F class shooters, so they don't know what an F class range should look like. So it kind of didn't get done as well as it could have. But now we do have um, an F class shooter with, you know, 30 years experience of shooting f-class all over canada and probably other countries as well who's going to help get this project up and running and yeah so if we could i mean rescue gun club could now have ipsic trap and f-class matches that would be right on and i'm looking forward to getting my target rifle back and and hopefully uh taking part in that i don't think i'll start chasing f-class matches around 
but uh it'd be cool to at least you know get some get some trigger time with my rifle and if it's like i think matthew it'll be like guys who have had a a pistol for years and then they come to a black badge class and like oh this is how i use my pistol this is how i you know how they kind of an eye opener well if i start shooting my rifle um under somebody else's terms and conditions that's when you kind of find the kinks in the armor so to speak so Mm -hmm. and then today i went hunting with uh, officer frank he came to pick me up and we took his side by side and it was so cool i had no idea matthew the trails and i'm speaking just to matthew because he's in my area more than you guys are but uh right in my backyard there's a whole bunch of snowmobile trails and mb new brunswick trails that you can access with with quads and we were like all over the place like we saw a moose today we saw three grouse today and it's just right in my backyard like i want to get i thought i was living in you know in town and was far removed from wildlife but no man we were like 10 minutes and it's like oh there's a partridge or grouse oh look at that a couple hours or like an hour yeah a couple hours later there's a moose but anyway um our hunting got interrupted, and so that's why I really clued in, kind of chimed in there for a second, Matthew, when you were talking about how your hunting got interrupted. Mm-hmm. Um, we're driving along, and all of a sudden, this elderly gentleman on a quad flags us down frantically, and he's like, "There's a guy missing. He was he he's lost. He uh, is between 75 and 80 years old. He went in the, the woods yesterday at lunchtime. He hasn't been seen since." And that means he spent the night in the woods last night. It was very cold here last night. And we're like, oh, we're no longer hunting. Put the gun away. We're now on let's go find this guy mode. And so that's what we did. We spent an hour driving around in that area thinking we were going to find him out of gas at the end of a trail or something, right? Mm -hmm. Lost, confused. Apparently he had a heart condition. And um, anyway, we did that for a while. And then we went back to his neighborhood to kind of meet up with the neighbors and the cops were there and start the search and just when we were getting organized to go who shows up he does yeah somebody was still looking for him and found him and he was in good enough shape being between 75 and 80 to and spent the night in the woods all night he was able to drive his own bike home and follow follow the um follow the other guy who had found him on his bike so frank and i were thinking okay uh, I've, I, I only have one hand, so I can't operate the throttle on a, on a quad. So if we find the guy, put Frank on his quad, put him in the side by side with me and I would follow Franco. Right. Mm-hmm. But it didn't happen. So we went back to hunting, saw a moose, no more growth, discovered all kinds of little nice spots. Kind of need a bike to, to go to them though. Well, you yeah. remember where you and I went to test the, um, I do the Garand. Well, yes. that's where we went in. Gotcha. And we took some other trails to get to that spot. It makes sense but, that there'd be a bunch of stuff out there. I mean, that's, you know, it's close to town, but it's pretty remote still. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, and once you're on the all other of, side. All of New Brunswick is really in the woods. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I just didn't realize the woods was so accessible from town here. Hmm. So, yeah, now I'm torn between buying a Jeep or buying a side-by-side. Because that side-by-side he has is a 1,000cc um, Can-Am commander or something like that right he's got this a, this adapter that you can put two more seats into the back so it can be you know four people uh Here, here's yeah, the so. thing about the side by sides they're great on the trail but they're crap on the road here's a nice thing about a jeep you can drive it on the road and on the trail and the trail you're absolutely right yeah absolutely right so a but jeep really a is a side by side it sure is with air conditioning <laughs> yeah and a heater and cruise yeah. control maybe so if this, you get that option the last thing I'm going to say about the side by side, all day we were driving and he had it on the eco mode. Yeah. And, and then he flicked this magical button called sport mode, and oh my God, it came <laughs> to life. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they are a lot oh. of fun to mess around on, that's for sure. Oh man, yeah, they sure were. So so that was it, yeah. Uh, oh, so as far as the 410 goes and why I hate them, we saw three growths today, and the first one. Uh, I, I made fun of him right away when he said he was bringing a 410. I'm like, what? Why? Well, you know, it's short and it's compact and blah, blah. I said, and anemic, which he didn't he didn't catch that. Right. Um, so anyway, the first gross that he shot at flew away. If that had been even a 20 gauge, he would have downed it. But uh, So he shot at it on the ground? It was on the ground. What kind of what kind of 410 was it? Just a single shot Kui. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And he was probably 20 yards and it flew away. Right. So, 
Um, and then the next two were together and I only saw one of the two and he shot one and then one flew away from where they were to get, like they went off in separate directions Yeah, and one didn't go off far enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And we saw a young, a young, uh, moose. I don't know if it was a cow or a bull. I just caught the hind quarter walking off the trail right? and he got out and tried to get a better look at it. But well, here's the thing about the 410. They've got the same velocity as a 20 gauge and a 12 gauge. And it's the no, same size payload. shot. What's yeah, that? It's just payload. It's just payload, it, right? It's so. not. Yeah, it's 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 the shot. So it's the the size of the the pattern. So all you got to do is be more careful when you're shooting. It wasn't yeah. that the 410 wasn't powerful enough to kill that bird. It's that he missed. Yeah. <laughs> so at 20 yards, a 410 is going to take down a grouse. I mean, even if it's an open choke, yeah, 20 yards is not very far away. Uh, yeah. You'd you'd have to have a terribly patterning gun and shot for that to for that to miss. It's just that it is a very narrow shot column, so you've got to aim a lot more precisely than you have to aim with a 12 gauge or a 20 gauge. I wonder if he went over top. Maybe didn't get his head down low enough on the on the rifle. Very or on the possible. Shotgun. Very yeah. possible. But I've I've practiced with my uh, my 410 quite a bit, and I can tell you that I'm confident onto anything out to 30 yards, easy. Wow. Wow. Did you, the, did, did you check what kind of choke he had on that uh, 410? I think it was a full, but I can't say with 100% certain. The, the cooies usually are usually were full. Unless the barrel yeah. had been cut down by somebody, then it would be open, of course. But if it was a factory barrel, the, most of the cooies came with full. So the two stories that I want to tell you guys after the show, so don't let me forget. <laughs> All uh, right. One, one, about the four, one about the 410, one about the missing guy. All right. Sounds like uh, th- thank you for teasing the listeners, and they don't no. get to hear the story. <laughs> They're not part of the inner circle. I'm sorry. Nah, All right. Nah. <laughs> Adriel, what did you do? Oh, not a heck of a lot. Um, I bought uh, 2,009 millimeter bullets from uh, PND the other week, and then over the weekend. Uh, Were they made... X metal bullets? They don't have X metal bullets in Edmonton yet. I, I asked them, you and the nearest dealer. they have is at Wolverine. Yeah. I'll 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 stack them up in my uh in my townhouse yeah, here. Fine. Sure. <laughs> uh I I would I'd like to get some though. Uh so I made uh, I made 1500 of those in an evening. Uh I kind of sat <laughs> down and that 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 was a little bit slow because I shot a video of the square deal we started a little bit late. I like um, the square deal. I like the square deal a lot. What oh, is makes... this what is this square deal you speak of? It's, it's a it's... mini Dylan that's just good for making like one one cartridge you can get like change outs and that kind of thing for it but why i the, mean if, yeah the if, thing uh, about the square deal matthew is that the dies are specific to the machine it doesn't use universal dies like the other presses oh okay it, okay so it's kind so of is like, it like five, cheaper or something it's cheaper um it's, it's cheaper, good to like it's set smaller, up it's, yeah it's, very uh, small yeah it's quick it's like a 550 where okay you know on my machine that you have to manually put the bullet on but the brass is fed for you yeah. Well, on the square deal, you have to put the brass and put the bullet, but it's progressive. You don't have to manually index it. It's it auto indexes just like the 650 does. So the shell plate moves forward to the next station every time you crank the handle for you. So it's like a 550 and kind of like a 650. So it's progressive in that it rotates by itself, but you have to place the brass on the shell plate and place the bullet on the shell plate. But it, it it's so simple that it's very reliable. They don't ha- uh, cough and get plugged up or jammed up, or you don't have a lot of stoppages. With yeah, the well, that, I mean, anything that you simplify is going to become more reliable. Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm just looking at it on the website now. It's um, neat. Yeah. So, yeah, Adriel, it's... did it did it run smooth and reliably for you guys? Uh, we're uh, we're actually getting uh, getting it refurbished by uh, Dylan soon here because this is a really old model. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this isn't I think now they have the square deal B. This yeah. is a square deal. No <laughs> B. It's so it's really old. It's yeah, they are yeah. there are upgrade kits for it, yeah. 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 I, I and you know, it's it's been reliable. The only thing that we've had troubles with is the uh the primer tube has this little plastic deal at the bottom that kinda that kinda holds the primers and yeah. that thing's lost its stiffness because it's plastic and you know, over the years the plastic loses stiffness. So mm-hmm. um we've uh We've, we've been, I hear other uh, things do that too, other than plastic. But <laughs> in this case, yeah, I could see how it loses its uh, ten. What's the what's the technical word? The tensile strength. So, carry sure, on. that's a word, that it, and it sounds technical, nowhere. so it must be. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 
But I mean, it like, like clearly it's been it's been working pretty good because if you can make fifteen hundred in, in an evening, just uh, kind of farting around and starting late and that kind of thing, you know, that's that's a lot of ammo, and that's what it's really good at. You, it stays in one spot, uh, and you just get on that thing and start cranking the handle, and before you know it, you've got a thousand uh, uh, rounds out. Mm-hmm. So really good for that kind of thing. Um, and Andy Shan has one that's up to date as far as the versions are concerned, as far as I can tell from looking at it. And he's just got her set up for, I mean, his reloading room looks like uh, a laboratory or an OR. Like it's 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 sterile. <laughs> it's so it's so well organized and so neat. But he's got the RCBS progressive press and that he does rifle on and a couple other things, I think. But he's got the square deal set up just for his 45 ACP. And that's all he does. His, his 45 ACP on that. Well, I think he has some other calibers, but uh, he's just he has it set out to rock out the 45, and he does his own casting and powder coating as well. Bought a special mold actually for powder coating your your bullets, and he's hmm. he he pumps out like match grade ammo off of that thing. Yeah, yeah. So that was what I was up to. I mean, I didn't. Uh, I, I brought a couple guns out to to my parents' place for the uh, for the holidays here, and I didn't end up shooting anything. I just ended up doing uh, turkey time. Turkey time. Turkey. For American listeners, uh, we had the Canadian uh, Thanksgiving this last weekend here. Do we have to convert that to from metric for them, or? Yeah, it's like one sixty fourth or something. I don't know. Yeah. Our turkeys, like our balls, footballs, are bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. What? They are footballs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I should have said the foot part first. Okay. First, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Listen, Kelly, what were you up to? Thank you. I, I, I didn't do anything at all. I was busy going to a wedding in PEI. Listen, I didn't bail <laughs> on you. <laughs> yeah, you did. I did. Listen, I can't go teach a black badge if no one wants to be taught. True. Well, gonna, gonna, I'm going to go over there and, and, and teach to... Two people? Sure. I was well, there. I, I, I'd like to, but... Yeah. But I did get to see Filthy, so that was awesome. Did you get helmet picks? I did. Didn't you see them? I thought, well, we guys... Maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyways, yeah, I saw Filthy, but yeah, Trevor did bail on me totally. I didn't totally bail on you. He was the whole reason why I was going to PEI as well. That's <laughs> totally... Yeah, that makes sense. Why dry... Yeah, Trevor's going to PEI. I'm going to not see him in New Brunswick. I'm just going to follow him to the island. Makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, it's not stalkerish at all. <laughs> every every show needs a creepy host, and I thought I was it till you showed up. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I didn't do anything at all. Yeah. Oh, I oh, saw well. Bolivar. You saw Filthy, and I saw Bolivar, and I didn't that's see right. either you, Bo- you or Bolivar. So thanks for coming yeah. to see me, Kelly. But she tried to Matthew see you guys. Matthew bailed on me too. There you go. That was a legit bail. How did was... how did I bail on you? I didn't even know you were going to PEI. Wasn't she going to go visit you in Edmonton? She was, yeah. and then I, we never got any message from her. Oh yeah, you did. Uh-oh. Nah. Oh. <laughs> nah. Uh, you can check right. my phone. I'll hand it to you right now. You can check we'll, my phone. We will, kids. We'll discuss this after the show. <laughs> no. After class. No, Keep we're hammering this class. out now. <laughs> <laughs> so Your better half was here. wasn't feeling well. So. Oh, is that what it was? So Jewel bailed on you, not me. I would have gone. Well, nobody's going to throw Jewel under the bus. She's the executive <laughs> producer. I can. She She's is. my wife. You've got to take the brunt of this one. You bailed on Kelly. Dang it. So uh, Bolivar was sorry, here. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> so I'm just Bolivar. interrupting as much as I can because <laughs> Trevor's no in with Bolivar. No one cares that Bolivar was here, and no one cares that I helped him with his archery gear. Nope. You're Bolivar's right about that archery? second part. <laughs> yeah. <Bolivar. laughs> in, uh, shut up. Adriel. Bolivar, yeah, Bolivar just... <laughs> Bolivar right, I'm going to mute myself for a while. You guys talk about archery and crab. Let me know when you come back to 22s or something. <laughs> did, he get a, did he get a black bow? <laughs> no, he got a white bow. It's pearl white. It's a fancy... It's like a... Um, You're seriously going <laughs> to... It's like a 2011 Hoyt Contender Elite. It's the same bow that I shot when I went to Vegas. I hated it, and I still hate it, having worked on his... Um, so and is unfortunately- the 2011 just like a 1911, but a little bit like double stack arrow magazines or something? Exactly, nailed it. So no, he kind of got he kind of got hooped a little bit. Somebody sold him a bow that was too short for him, Uh-oh. and then the then the cam, which is the lower wheel that the strings are hooked onto, ended up being damaged and it came apart on him. He actually could have been injured. He, he bought got it used. It, yeah, 
well, it's hard to find a left-handed bow unless you go new and then you're going to wait for it. If you, the, a lot of, a lot of bow shops don't stock a lot of variety of left-handed bows. So you pick one out of a catalog, hope for the best, spend 1500 bucks on it. It I comes in and bow. go from there. No, he's not into it for hunting. He just wants to do some recreational target archery. So, I mean, he's almost there. Um, the bow is very, very close to fitting correctly right now. And it's not going to be detrimental. Like he can learn to shoot this thing and it won't be a huge adjustment if he gets another one and it stretches out to the right length. So, so yeah, he rolled into town last Saturday night, uh, about seven o'clock. We got on the whiskey pretty quick and, um, got off the bows pretty quick <laughs> and then finished up the next morning and sent him on his way to his mama's place. No, uh, no more arrows in walls. No, that's a Tommy, uh, Nelson thing. Oh, if Tommy Nelson wants to touch your bow, run away. <laughs> I remember that. Take, that was funny. Or take him outside. He can, he can, he can shoot a gun like nobody's business, but he's got a hard time with the whole bow thing. No, Tom, you've got to no stop. Bang! Oh, that's two holes in my wall. Super duper. <laughs> but anyway, listen. I, I may or may not have put an arrow right through a guy's office wall once, and it poked right out through the outside, like <laughs> right through the wall, through the siding, the whole night. Yeah, I did that, so I can't complain. To Tommy, I was showing off about how to draw a bow back, and I, at least I had an arrow on it. It didn't have a tip, mind you, but I w- wasn't using a release aid, and it was like a 65-pound bow, and it slipped off my fingers, and I put an arrow through his wall. So I kind of had an AD in a guy's office with a bow. Yeah, so, there, you, there you go. Yeah, yeah that, that ought to cheer you up, Matthew. I broke stuff. <laughs> I am thrilled. I am entertained. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, let's keep this entertainment train going down the tracks and discuss some upcoming events. Speaking of upcoming events, did we get the charity shoot put in from the... Yes, we did. Okay. All right. Uh, so the Fralacci handgun course is now full on both days. So basic mm-hmm. handgun is full and critical handgun is also full. Uh, payments are going to be due by the end of January, Matthew. Yeah, yeah, but uh, well, well, same as what let, we did let's last say year. February first. Payment should be All in right. before February first. There you go. So you can pay now up until February first. Or we take right. your name off the list. Yeah, and and don't you know? We're, we're, yeah, you don't need to pay right now. I mean, we're fine waiting until the new year. So it's yeah, it's yeah not well, a big deal. you can pay now I if said. you want. If you yes. want, I just don't okay, want to make now. people feel like they're going to be pressured into paying now. They're not. You got until February to pay. No big but deal. Now but, but now is fine too. But now is fine too. So, so is now fine, Trav? I'm just curious now if, if now is now fine. Now is time to it talk is. about Ragnar Rock Tactical. Right. They're doing a carbine <laughs> operator course at Guelph Rod and Gun Club in Guelph, Ontario, on October 15th. Uh, so that's two days away if you haven't already signed up for that. Cost is $176.99 plus tax. The Woodstock um, Rifle and Pistol Club in New Brunswick is holding a fundraiser also on October 15th, 2015. Tickets are on sale for 10 bucks a piece. You can contact the club at WPRC2005 at gmail.com. Kelly, you're snickering. Did I do something wrong? Oh, 2016. <laughs> Who did that? I just, I just read the teleprompter. I just... Uh, you know, San Francisco can go F itself. I just, whatever's there, I'll read it. Everyone knows that. Oh, man. Uh, 17th annual Hunter sight in. And you know what? I'm done. Somebody else can read. I'm done. Done reading, huh? Yeah, go for it, Matthew. Where, where, where did you leave one. off the 17th annual? 17th annual, yeah. All right. Sight in and swap meet October 22nd. Bring surplus gear to trade or barter. It's at the Frontenac Rifle and Pistol Club in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, the Canadian Patriot podcast and the International Liberty or Death podcast will be holding a charity shoot at the Guelph Rod and Gun Club on November 5th, 2016. The funds raised will go to the family of cancer victim Sharon Latimer. The day will consist of a friendly match across three platforms, pistol, rifle, and shotgun at ranges not exceeding 40 yards. Compete in one of two classes, handicap and standard, using a rimfire pistol or rimfire or rim. Uh, pistol caliber rifle will qualify you for the handicap class. Stages will be divided between pistol, shotgun, and rifle. Scoring will be based on hybrid time plus penalty and point system. Each match registration earns you one entry into the prize pool to be announced. Additional entries can be purchased at the event and one additional entry will be awarded free to anyone who dons a plate carrier with plates for the entire match. Oh, that'll be fun. (laughs) 
<laughs> get there without getting arrested, and you should get in for free as well. I think that's yeah. The the registration actually includes a bleep, um, so we'll just have to. Uh, no, and- we're going to use the we're going to use the politically correct or the TV correct Battlestar Galactica version. Oh. Right. Okay. So it's practicescore. dot com slash frac cancer charity shoot slash register, and that's frac dash cancer dash charity dash shoot. Anyway, it, I'm not going to read the rest of them because Adriel is no, going to we'll happily throw. put these in the show notes. You guys can check these on our website. Um. Yeah, and I do have one more that was sent to me in a Facebook message from uh, the Apple Seed Princess, and it is going to take place. The event is called Sight In Days at the Battle Creek Sportsman Club. Uh, the event takes place on October 29th and 30th, and again on November 5th and 6th, 2016. Times are from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., five bucks for non-members, and uh, this event is open to the public. To the public. Um, experienced members on site to help you sight in your rifles, muzzle loaders, and shotguns. Uh, so, yeah, so even if you're not a member of the club, just pay five bucks. And you can go there, and someone will help you sight in your firearm. Sounds like a little tune-up for a hunting event. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've All seen right. more more ranges doing that. That's kind of a cool idea. Mm. Yeah, we uh, we're gonna have to uh, uh, police ours a bit more closely. It's an item we discussed last night when we took down our steel, or we took down our stages from SummerSlam. The stuff didn't get put away. Some stages stayed up because of the three gun, but the stages on the 200 meter range were taken down and just the materials piled against the side of the of the bay out of the way. Someone took one of our steel poppers out and lit it up several times. Like once is an accident. After that, it's just deliberate and willful destruction of club property, and that makes you an a hole. Not impressed. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's. I think it came across that you're not impressed. So yeah. no. Yeah. No. So um, news. We got a couple of news items. Um, James, I can, sent, I can the, take that uh, yeah. one from James. All right. Police arrest man carrying handgun machete in Dartmouth. A man is in custody after he was seen carrying a handgun and machete in Dartmouth early Saturday morning. Halifax Regional Police say they received numerous reports around 1.20 a.m. of a man with a gun in the first block of, is it Brule Street? Mm-hmm. Brule? Brule? Uh, officers confiscated a replica 45 caliber handgun and a machete. The suspect has been charged with possession of weapons for a dangerous purpose. Yeah, don't uh, don't carry your machetes around town, folks, or your replica firearms. That's yeah. just silly. Adriel, do you also want to cover that um, thread on Re- excuse me on Reddit about the Beowulf mags? Well, the, it's it's not real, it's not news, but it's it's kind of a, applicable to. Uh, there's a CGN thread right now about a guy who's been charged with. Uh, there was there was actually this isn't the first time, but. Uh, uh, someone's been charged with uh, uh, possession of Beowulf mags as, as a prohibited device. That happened and, this uh, weekend in Ontario, right? Yes, well, that's that, correct. Now, yeah. the one, there's been previous ones, and they've had the charges dropped. I think uh, maybe maybe they didn't feel ballsy enough to uh, to actually go through Here's, the charges before. Can, can I give my tinfoil theory on that? Go for the, it. The original person, the first person who was charged with prohibited device uh, for being in possession of a 50 Beowulf mag was carrying a Press Check Ventures Beowulf mag, which was designed in Canada and manufactured in Canada for Beowulf mags from the ground up. And Specifically this, an original design. That's it's right. not a this converted... Wasn't, wasn't a converted mag. Now, this person who they're pressing charges with and continuing to press charges, and they're, they're not going to drop them, he had uh, Alexander Arms 50 Beowulf right. mags, which are um, just your standard AR-15 mag that has the feed lips adjusted. So that could be why they think that these charges could stick this time, because this is not an original mag. But here's the thing. They were legally imported into Canada as 50 Beowulf mags, from the manufacturer of 50 Beowulf. So obviously these magazines were designed for 50 Beowulf. They weren't converted in Canada. They were converted out in the state. So once they come into Canada, it should be a brand new product, but that's not how the RCMP is interpreting it. Exactly. And I, I mean, the, um, the, the thing that was on Reddit was uh, a link to the FRT listing on it. And the FRT says, uh, you know, it, it says that they're, what is it? Dual caliber, any, any magazine made for the AR platform, uh, if it if it fits two two three is therefore limited to five rounds, but that's not what the law says. That's not what the criminal code says. So that's right. 
Yeah, they're um, saying that because the original caliber of the AR-15 is two two three, all mags that can fit into it must only hold five rounds of two two three. That's ridiculous because the original caliber for the Glock is nine mil. Yet there are Glocks that have different calibers. There's there's you can get uppers grasping, grasping. They are grasping, grasping. and you know yeah. I. I don't think they have a case. If they interpret the law as it's written, and if they interpret it with even a smallest amount of common sense, they, they can the, the Crown cannot win. However, we have a liberally dominated legal system with a liberal majority government, which means that we will get no backing from our politicians. We need to fight this with logic and uh, with a good lawyer. And I yeah. don't know if a GoFundMe account has been set up yet for this guy, but there was talk of it, and as soon as there is, I think it's important that the gun community helps this guy buy the best lawyer he can possibly get. Well, he says that he's yeah. been being represented, but I don't know if it's the best that he can get. I also know that uh, it's going to be precedent setting. So, like Matthew says, this is going to impact hugely on anything going forward. So, yep. Yeah. Well, they can still drop it. And they, like, looking at this thing, they probably will. Like, right now, they've got kind of a de facto, they, they, like, aside from Press Check Ventures, they kind of have a de facto ban on 50 Beowulfs by stopping them from import, right? That's right. So they, they can, can't they get can, any more they can, Yeah, exactly. They don't necessarily need them to be officially, and, like, they don't have to change the law and make them officially uh, illegal. All they need to do is stop them from import to... Uh, uh, hamper things a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily need to ban them. Now, what I think will happen here is, uh, I, I personally think they're going to drop the charges. If they go through with the charges, that would be awesome because we can set precedent. But what you said before, Matthew, you know, with the liberal government in play, they, you know, they very well could say, oh, well, uh, we don't like that. So we're going to, I don't change know. I don't even law. know. I don't even know how they would change the law to make it make sense a, a, because a it does make or, sense right yeah. now. No, it doesn't. It, as, like it, it, it well, the, oh, the oh, sorry. Yeah, laws, it, yeah, yeah. It, as it's as written, the magazine right law now, does make bad. sense. Yeah, it can't hold more than five rounds for the original caliber that it was designed. That makes sense. Yes, it's yeah. it's not fantastic in use, and it causes all these confusing uh, situations. Yeah. But at least it's it's not bad to uh, uh, to enforce. Right. Uh, what the heck do you do? With, like, okay, now it's for the gun that you're using it for. What the heck do you do if I if I've got an FNS nine and an FNS forty in my gun bag, and I've got magazines for the forty and the nine? Yeah. Which how one do is you a prohibited device? How do you enforce that? You can't. Yeah. yeah, so it it becomes very silly uh, if if they want to change it, um, and I, th I think it, it you know it just goes back to <laughs> it's a metal box with a spring and a chunk of plastic on top. Mm. What are you gonna do for legislation on this thing? This is something that you know you can make in like a high school sheet metal shop, and uh, and we're trying to legislate them as like the, the you know tools of uh, uh, terrorism and and that's kind of well, thing. Well, here's when, you here's know, what gets me is. Shouldn't laws be based on common sense? I, I mean, I would think. And this is a public safety law, as they would call it. And the the bad guys are obviously going to go out and buy a $50 Beowulf mag to get 14 rounds of ammo in their legally in their AR that they stole from some guy's truck. Probably a cop car because he left it open. <laughs> as yeah, opposed, no. to, as well, opposed to taking a $25 GI mag and unpinning it. You're exactly. Right, Matthew. Yeah. Why are they gonna? Why you know? Why are they gonna spend the money to get half the capacity when they can spend half the money and get full capacity? Because if they have Matthew, a... they can't go after criminals. They can only go after people who obey the law. Yeah. By effecting new changes to screw them because they will follow it. Yeah. All these gun laws only affect you and I. It They're drives not me gun laws mad. for criminals. If it... they were gonna make gun laws for criminals, we'd have an all-out ban. Yep. And then criminals would be shooting each other with stolen guns. And then when they get those off the street, after 100 years, they'd be making guns in their garages. And yep. there'd still be guns. No, nah, they'd yep. still be they'd be getting them from the U.S. Like we've yeah. uh, and I mean, and locally here, how many guns are still in Canada that are that um, uh, were never registered from from 95? Right. Right. Like right. there's so many farmers around that that just have guns that just will never register. And they just yeah. can't be bothered. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Can't be bothered. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that was that was interesting, guys. Yeah. <laughs>
I wasn't it, it even needs, trying to be it sarcastic. Needs to go to, it, it, it needs to go to court, right? It needs it to does. go to court. It needs to be challenged. It needs yeah. to be shown that the RCMP don't know what they're doing, that, or or maybe they do know what they're doing. Oh, they know what uh, they're doing. They're, they're not... just being vindictive. No, it's well. I mean, it, it, here's the thing. After the Beowulf, if we lose the Beowulf, what are they going for next? We lose every. Well, well yeah, that's yeah. a slippery slope, right? Do we lose okay. LAR mags next? Do yep. we lose the That'll ability to put yeah, they're, they're, um, you know nine applied. mil in a forty round forty cal mag? Like, do we? Lose, yeah, it'll be what, after what the LAR. Are, are are we then not going to be allowed to put a two and three quarter inch shell in a shotgun chambered for three and a, three and a half? Yep. Yep. So you know how, where does it end? All of it, it ends with all guns gone. Uh, well, That's no, what it'll they want. end. It'll it, well one it'll round. End, yeah, <laughs> S- single shot cooies all around, folks. That's all you got. It, it, it'll Very end Matthew. Canadian. It'll end Matthew with the um, closing of what they perceive as loopholes to the laws right. they wrote. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. It's not a loophole. It's not a loophole. So, they wrote the laws in in such a manner that we are legally circumventing their intentions. But that's not our fault for them writing it wrong. No. If it's the, no. I mean, we're following the letter of the law and. In this case, I mean, most of the time I'm in favor of enforcing the spirit of the law because the idea of the spirit of the law is, you know, don't kill somebody. It's because you shouldn't be killing people, you know. Right. What this, the spirit of the gun laws is, in my opinion, and in most people's opinion who has any sort of common sense, very dumb because, as we've all discussed before, bad guys don't follow gun control laws. So in this case, I think it's very important we follow the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. That well, may... think about those poor guys out there that are going to have 50 Beowulf rifles and they're going to have like one round. Mag. Two. Yeah, you can hold two. <laughs> two two rounds in a Woo. properly pinned Beowulf mag according to the RCMP. Or or just tell people, you know, if you have a Beowulf mag, only fill it with Beowulf. Kind of like... No, because have... the RCMP actually say in their FRT notice there that all Beowulf mags should hold no more than two rounds of 50 Beowulf. Wow. Right. Because they feel that because they can also hold five, five, six, they they are not going to be allowed for them to hold five rounds of fifty Beowulf. They can only hold five rounds of five, five, six. The only people they're messing with are three gun shooters like me. Basically, yeah, people who are who are gaming, people who are yep. playing a safe sport on a safe range. Yeah. Well, it's not, mess- it's not even gaming. Every, everyone at my three gun uses either the Beowulfs or they they take the the Lars and they uh, uh, join them. the. Yeah, they couple them at the bottom because you need the length to be able to run out of a belt, That's right? right? Like yeah. this is a legitimate sport that we're <laughs> that we're trying to engage in here, oh. and you know it's it's terrible trying to run a, a three gun course with fi- like the the five round mags because you're just changing mags all the time. You get good at that though. I'm yeah. going <laughs> I'm going to a three gun match at the end of the month in Halifax, Adriel, and they don't they don't allow Beowulf mags. I don't know why. I'll ask when I'm down there. I'll respect whatever they say. But I just want to actually know the reason. Is it because they worry about the legality? Is it because not everybody has them? So if I run them and you don't, I have a huge advantage. Um, oh. it's, like, it's like when I show up to an archery tournament and the rule says any commercially available arrow. So I buy the biggest arrow I possibly can because it gives me an advantage and gets me closer to the scoring lines. And you could too. You chose not to. Don't call me a cheater. Call yourself naive right. and whatever else for not doing it look so the, the, the same yeah. thing as beowulf mags you you can buy them too there's nobody stopping you yeah so. yeah it sounds to me that's probably the organizer doesn't want to lose because he doesn't want to spend the money to get beowulf mags oh he has all the money in the world so oh. i don't think that's right. the reason i think right. it may be competitors who right. are participating don't right maybe but Ah, you know, know th- those coupled LAR mags, the thing, the problem with that, those is that if you go prone or something like that, you can't monopod off of it. You jam your, your bullets in the bottom mag into the dirt. Uh, if you drop a mag, you're damaging feed lips. So yeah. I really prefer running the Beowulf mags because you're Jeez. dropping it on a flat floor plate yeah, and you're yeah. not monkeying around twisting your mag to we've try to get seen, more out of one. We've seen the bent feed lip situation with some of the soft aluminum LAR mags dropping and yeah, we've seen that. Yeah, and then yeah. and then and then not notice the damaged feed lip, and the mag and the mag screw somebody on their next stage, because yeah, of I, I had a had a guy uh, you, you've seen where the ammo just shoots out the top all the all oh, the, the volcano come out. yeah yeah the yeah. volcano <laughs> we had a guy volcano <laughs> like look at his gun like what what just went on <laughs> imagine like a volcano inside your gun that's oh. like, yeah anyways those. 
those LAR mags, they'll 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 do that. And it's just because it's because we're we're doing something they're not designed for. They're designed to run as a a small, nice and compact ten rounder. Uh, if you've got a non restricted rifle that could run uh, uh, those tens, that would be perfect for hunting. But for for uh, uh, competition, yeah, in Canada, the Beowulf mags are where it's at. Yep. That's all I gotta say about that. All right, Forrest. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all Thank I have you, to Forrest. say about that. <laughs> I was running and running. <laughs> okay, main topic. So we decided, uh, because I belly ached and whined about an email last week and, and how I felt that the boys could have answered the question more appropriately or better or whatever. Anyway, That's I That's not what you got, said. You said we bleeped it up. Didn't, yeah, well, bleeped it up. Could have did better, whichever. I mean, I told so. You totally well, you dropped got, the ball. I believe those were some exact those words were that words. came out of your mouth. Yeah, you are awful, and you, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. So what I told you guys, and what I tell the listeners, I told you guys is clearly three different things. <laughs> so anyway, I I saw it as a missed opportunity to educate um, the person who emailed in and asked the question, and perhaps other listeners as. Uh, the process of sighting in not only how to adjust the sights on your handgun to move the point of aim to the point of impact or whichever. <laughs> I've got to get that straight right off you the bat. You better get that straight right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> as well as uh, how, to, how to adjust iron sights on a rifle and how to adjust a scope. So I thought maybe I could talk about handgun, adjustable sights, non-adjustable sights, and Maybe, Matthew, you could cover iron sights? and. Well, here's April. the thing. If you talk about how to adjust the iron sights on a handgun, it's the exact same procedure in an it iron is. sight rifle. The okay. only... I, I got shotgun sights. I you wanted got... shotgun yeah, sights. <laughs> Matthew made that joke. All right, Kelly, Kelly, I was going to give Kelly shotgun sights, but you guys ruined my joke, so thanks for that. No, you're, you're welcome. Yep. What? Yeah, Kelly, you have to talk about how to adjust the sights on a shotgun. So Bead sights only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just bead sights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess the only the only difference is uh, between pistol and, and rifle iron sights that I've seen, Matthew, is sometimes the old guys would file the front sight. And we usually don't do that anymore on a, on a modern handgun. Well, but. and the other thing is with, with handguns, it, we shouldn't be talking about the differences already, but we are. The other, the other difference is with a handgun, you basically are shooting point of aim, point of impact at 20 yards and you're done. There's no calculating your distance because your bullet doesn't have enough time to drop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. with a rifle, there is. You have to worry about your elevation too and kind of factor in your height over yeah. bore and stuff like that. But whatever. So, Why don't you start with handguns and we'll, we'll oh, go yeah. from there. So so I'll, I'll, I'll walk through the procedure that I do to sight in my handguns and you guys can chime in if you do something differently than I do. So um, I don't assume that it's sighted in from the factory. Um, and if, especially if it's a second hand gun, what I will do is I will take the gun to the range and I will actually bench the handgun. So I will sit at the firing line with a bunch of sandbags. You can actually buy professional pistol rests that you can rest your pistol on while shooting it. I thought so you were going to say professional sandbags and I was going to say, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shooting bags. Yeah. You yeah guess that's you true. Could. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the reason I do this is I want to take my, uh, myself out of the equation um you're less likely to flinch or have a bad trigger press if you are shooting off of sandbags for example uh, as opposed to standing up and you can usually get away with shooting at a farther distance off sandbags and you'll be more accurate than you would if you were to try and stand up and shoot 20 yards i don't start at 20 yards i'll start at 10 yards um off of the sandbags to get an initial group and see where the gun is hitting so there's two ways you can go about adjusting your um your your sights on your pistol let's cover adjustable sights if you have a pistol with adjustable sights that means almost every time the rear sight is adjustable okay so you'll have an adjustment for the windage which is moving the impact of the bullets left and right across the target and the elevation which is the up and down so um, if you're shooting at the bullseye on the target, whatever you put as, a, as something to aim at, you're shooting at it and your bullets are impacting to the left of the center of target, then you move your rear sight to the right. So when you're adjusting a rear sight, it's very simple, opposite of the group. If your bullets are left, move your sight to the right. Well, uh, can, I, can I jump in just for sure. a second, Trevor? Because you're, you're mentioning, there's there's two ways of thinking of this. There's 
Uh, move your sites to where the group is. That's one way of thinking of it. And the other way of thinking of it is move your sites to adjust the impact. They're the same thing, uh, but that that changes how you think about it. So if like version one, move your sites to to the group where your gun is is hitting, or version two, move your move your sites to the uh, confusion. To impact. The confusion there, you say move your sights to where the gun is hitting. Well, if my bullets are hitting left, I don't move my sight left. I move my rear sight right. You adjust your sight to the opposite direction of the group, and that will... Oh, you're, well, on your rear sight, yes, but I mean, yeah, you're, and I'm only what talking you're doing about on rear the... sight right now. I'm only talking Correct. about rear sight right now. So I'm on just the rear... putting it out there. There's two ways of thinking of it. Well, I'm going to get to... I'll step off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back up, man. <laughs> Don't step to me. Back up. So, and the same holds true for if your group is higher or lower than you want. If your bullets are hitting high, move your rear sight down. If your bullets are hitting uh, low, move your rear sight up. Now, the opposite is true with the front sight. The front sight, you follow the group. If you want to adjust your front sight as opposed to your rear sight, if your bullets are hitting right and you don't want them to, move the sight to the right. And that will cause you to twist the muzzle to the left and your bullets will impact left closer to center. So, and then the filing method, which, you know, Matthew, uh, well, how does that go again? If you're, you just, if you're shooting too, too low, you file some off. Um, or do I have that backwards? Yeah. You, you, with your front sight, you're always following the group, right? So if, Mm -hmm. if you're shooting and you're hitting too low, yes, you would file some off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So yeah, if you're shooting too high, that. if you're shooting too high, there's nothing you can do. You got to get a taller right. sight. If you're shooting yeah. too low, you can file some off. But like right. you said, Trev, we hardly ever file sights anymore because there are so many aftermarket sights available. You can Adjustable, just buy the next yeah. size and just yeah. go from there. So whether it be a pistol or a rifle, if it's iron sights and you're adjusting the rear sight, it's opposite the group. If the group is to the left, then you move the sight to the right. If the group is up, you move the sight down. Pretty, yep. pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Anybody have any? Anything different or anything to add? I think the key is, I mean, once you understand the mechanics behind it, the key is to shoot as accurately as you possibly can off of the bench. There is absolutely no point in trying to adjust your sights if you're shooting freehand because nobody can shoot a perfect freehand group. We are humans and we are fallible because we have muscles and bones and things move around and and you just you have to take yourself out of the equation as best you can. And when I'm shooting uh, my handgun, I actually don't even I, I try to grip the gun as loosely as I possibly can because I don't want to imp, imp, um I don't want to no. impact it at all, throw it off at all. So I, I will actually put my thumb on the back and my finger, one finger on the front, and I just very slowly pinch that trigger straight back. The gun, you know, the recoil is, it flips. You got to be careful. You got to watch it, of course. It's going to move. Um, but you're not worried about recoil control here. The bullet is well out of the barrel before the gun starts to move. So that is how I most accurately shoot my handgun. Um, from a bench. I, I do it as, as absolutely careful as possible. And that way you have a true idea as to where your gun's actually hitting. And that way, when you adjust your sights, you can be confident that they're sight, or sighted in properly. Mm-hmm. And then, then I'll transfer, uh, I'll transition to sh- standing um, and shooting. And now you can, if you're an accurate enough shooter and your form or your technique is down, you could refine this a little bit once you stand up because what well, Matthew just said, he doesn't want to influence the gun by his grip. Well, when I am gripping the gun and I am leaning and twisting and torquing and holding it with my support hand, I may now be changing how the sights are going to be impacted. And I may adjust it because now if I'm, I can hold the gun consistently the same way every time. So I may make a minor adjustment to compensate for how I hold the gun, but depending on the gun, I may not have to. So Double check it when you stand up, and if it's like way low left, well, yeah, that's you. But that's that's how you zero your pistol basically. Do it off of the bench, and that's how you move your sights to get the impact to get the group back into the center of the target. Yep. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, which one of you guys wants to cover, or girl wants to cover how to adjust a scope? That'd be uh, Owen. Oh, <laughs> Owen's not here. <laughs> Call him up. <laughs> I think Adriel should cover that one. He shoots a lot of uh, scopes. 
Well, a, a scope's easy. So, so for the scope, it's always the concept of bullet impact. So when it says up or right or left on the uh, on the scope turrets, that's what it's saying. It's uh, where do you want the bullets to go? So you can, you, like on a really good high quality scope, you should be able to shoot a group of three, find the middle of that group, dial in your scope to get that group to uh, to center, fire another three, and you should be on. Uh, now, with a low-quality scope or one that's been torqued incorrectly, this is where you're going to see guys at the range who, uh, especially like right in October, right, right about now, when they go to the hunting, uh, where, when they go to the shooting ranges, they'll shoot some uh, some rounds down range and they'll start knocking on their scope after they uh, after they make adjustments and they'll shoot and they'll adjust it a bunch more. I think a lot of those guys just torque their rings down too much and they they're actually like uh, binding up their uh, uh, is it the uh, it's, is it the erector set inside the scope? I'm not quite sure what the technical term is for it, but uh, if you if you crank down too hard on your rings, you're uh, you're stopping your scope from being able to adjust freely and, and you're binding uh, the internal. Yeah, we we're talking about yeah. that last week, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to mention it again because now that we're in October, you're going to see guys at the range that are that are going to be doing that. Uh, you should be able to shoot a group of three, make one modification to to your scope. Which is just dialing it down to uh, to to get it to uh, shoot in the middle, in center of uh, aim, and you okay, should now, be done. Elaborate. What do you mean by dial it down? What does that mean? So let's say you're uh, three inches to the left and one inch low. Okay. Uh, uh, you need to check your your scope. Usually they're quarter m away at a hundred at hundred meters. Usually they're a quarter m away clicks. So to move four inches to the right, you would need Four times four, that many clicks to the right. Sixteen. Yay, Kelly! <laughs> Kelly can math. Dato. <laughs> <laughs> or you okay. just count to four, four times. You can do that, too. <laughs> you can't count to potato. <laughs> I go, you know what I do? I'm like, okay, one, two, that's a half. One, two, that's an inch. That's what I do. Really? That's what I do. Yep, I, I yep. Yeah. Sometimes I'll well, do the math, to... but most of the time it's just like, okay, I know four is an inch, and I'm at fifty, so that means I need double it. So that means I need eight. Eight's an inch. Like yeah, and that's that's where a really nice clicky uh, yeah. scope uh, scope is really nice because it's very easy to determine where your clicks are. A really like one my one complaint about Leupold and Redfield scopes is that their adjustments are mushy as heck, and you can eat very easily go a couple of clicks and not feel them when you when you run by them. Whereas uh, some of your higher end, like precision scopes, the clicks are very like audible. Never mm-hmm. mind the fact like they're tactile. Um, so that's that's where those are are really nice. Now, if you get into like precision scopes, I'm, I'm assuming this is just for for simple stuff. But you, if you get into precision scopes, you may run into like a, a mill adjustment, and mill are oh boy, uh, what is the adjustment on those? I thought they were point one of an inch, but the, it's it's like a, a milli radian instead. Am I am I even close? Point one of an inch? Sure. I don't know. What am I? A scientist? <laughs> no, they're less. No, they're they're not as precise. No, mill sites aren't. They they round them up basically when you go to. Is it a but point? I know this because of the fact that we discussed this at Appleseed. Hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Kelly should be the one that should be talking about this. She no, does apple Adriel's, seed stuff. Adriel's doing fine. I'm actually. Go ahead. Here <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, if you've got a red dot or uh, like a, a a scope that doesn't have a lot of uh, magnification out of it, you may have sights that adjust at half MOA. So your clicks are are moving the scope or the red dot quite a bit more. Uh, but the most typical is is uh, is a quarter MOA. Uh, that's what you'll find on most of your hunting uh, hunting scopes and that kind of thing. And that level of precision is fine for hunting anyways. Yep, I would agree. Cool. Trevor, okay. is, Trevor is preoccupied. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's not like it's your show tonight. I oh, know. Wait. Are you guys good? Are we good? I guess so. Okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. I got, uh, I got the mill uh, division here. Okay. So at 100 yards, a 0.1 mil... Uh, let's see, one mil. Yeah, it's it's 0.36 of an inch at uh, at 100 yards. The reason why I'm using inches and yards is that most of our targets are are uh, subtended in inches, even in Canada here. So, uh, you know, it's it's handy to be able to know like adjustments in an inch uh, uh, way of thinking. So, yeah, yeah your your mill uh, mill scopes will be 0.36. So, that's, yeah, mill uh, scopes are great chunkier. if you're if you're shooting metric, but if you're shooting imperial, it makes way more sense to run the MOA system. 
So if you're going to shoot like a 308, definitely use the mil, uh, mil scopes. Uh, if you're shooting like a 7mm, you need to... Uh, oh, reverse. Yeah, the right? other way around. Yeah, 7mm, oh, yeah, you got to run yeah. mil, mil spec. And uh, 308, yeah. you, you run uh, yeah the MOA. You, you got to. The calibers are, are imperial. They don't understand if you don't run them into imperial scope. Scope just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We're funny. filthy. <laughs> that's not what he meant by imperial, but that's awesome. <laughs> Two points yeah. to Kelly. Yay. No, Yay! no points to Matthew. Half point to Adriel. All what right. Is this? Whose line is it anyway? <laughs> Thank you for catching that. Yes, it is. You just got back two points. Let's do scenes from a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is the debaters, the CBC show. Oh, uh, yes. Points, where That's the points a... don't matter, but they're awarded after every section. <laughs> yep. Drew Carey? Okay. okay. Uh, no, Drew Carey's on the debaters. Drew Carey's oh, on whose line is anyway. Is you anyway. just You just lost all your points uh, and got it. It doesn't matter, though, because the points don't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so, listeners, if you have any questions, if we clarify Hey, hey it, we, didn't, we didn't talk about shotguns. All right. Kelly, how do you sight in a shotgun? <laughs> Actually, you do sight in a shotgun. You look at the beat. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's here's the really the only unless you have like a ghost ring sight, which you shouldn't have which, if you're sh- shooting things in the air. You should. Kelly's have a got a bead. shotgun that needs to be sighted in. Yeah, the, I got sights on the my. The BR ninety nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, we tried. We yeah. tried. Sh- yeah, we tried the adjustments, and it's still off. When you're <laughs> when you're running yeah. a simple bead sight on a shotgun, really the only way to sight it in is to get the shotgun fitted to you. Right. Mm. That's right, actually, yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, you need the length of pull to be right. You need uh, the comb to be right, the rise to be right. There's all kinds of different ways that can be uh, that a shotgun can be adjusted. And you get your accuracy from mounting the gun the exact same way each time. And you can only do that if the shotgun's fitted to you properly. So if you buy, go out and buy a, you know, a, a Mossberg 500, and go out shooting, yeah, you're going to be able to hit things with it, but you're going to be a lot more consistent if you get that gun fitted to you. And that that's an expensive process. It's not super expensive, but expensive enough. But uh, if you're really into the, the shotgun shooting sports, I highly recommend it. Well, mm-hmm. some of the some of the new shotguns come with drop and cast adjustments on them now. Yep. Like they they'll come with like little shims and that kind of thing. Yep. So my Stoger 3500 came with shims for drop and cast. My buddy's nice. Beretta 1301 came with that as well. And he found uh, so the way he he uh, adjusted, he'd bring it up with his eyes closed, bring the shotgun up and mount it and and do that a couple times. And he was finding that he wasn't going low enough on it, and he couldn't go low enough on it. So he adjusted his, I believe it's cast. Um, I'm sure Jason Philp will email us and tell he us wrong, I'm will. wrong, but yeah, <laughs> probably will. Is it cast that sideways or drop? I don't know. It's probably drop. Uh, so he he adjusted it so that the the shotgun was pointing a little bit lower. And uh, now when he uh, mounts it, his eye is right along the rib, so it's right where it needs to be. And that was just a matter of taking the stock off, flipping a little uh, uh, shim around, and Bob's your uncle. You're you're adjusted. Nice. I um. I like the Magpul set that I put on the 590 because before that, there was no adjustment for me. The length of pull was what it was. But now they've got shims that go in the back and um, uh, two two combs. So you can take off the comb that's on there and go with a higher comb, depending on, and which is important if you put an optic on, on the rail on top. But uh, just using the um, sights that it came with, I think I'm just using the regular comb. I'd have to double check, but... I think on the 870, I've got the low comb, and on the 590, I've got the high comb because of the, how the sights were. So, yeah, it totally has adjustable sights, both windage and elevation. Um, I should probably sight it in with slugs at like 50 just for fun, because yeah, that will that, that'll sure. be that'll be cheap. <laughs> so. And fun on your shoulder. Oh yeah, for sure. Awesome, and I'll do that off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, cool. I have shot shotgun off the bench before doing that very same thing, and it is brutal. Mm, mm-hmm. It's fun though. It is. Do we um, do we want to get it uh, moving on to listener feedback? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. So I'll grab the first one. It's from Steve. He says, "Trevor, Matthew, and Owen." <laughs> right off of the bat, I'm I'm going to hazard a guess and say that <laughs> Steve is in the early episodes of his Slam Fire listening. Um, I would adventure. Mm. He says, I'm new to the podcast world and discovered your show by accidentally surfing the interwebs for three gun stuff. After listening to a few shows, 
I'm on episode 30 now. It sounds like Trevor and I were separated at birth. That is the parasitic twin they cut off. His name was Steve, <laughs> and they cut him off my hind quarter. No, we were no. It's us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I started out shooting a Norinco 1911 in nine millimeter. Well, Steve, again, the separation widens at our club and level matches. When I finally decided to get semi-serious about competition. I sold the olden gun and moved on to a Springfield XD40. Isn't that your every... first gun, Trevor? Well, it's definitely <laughs> one of my favorite striker-fired pistols because, you know, it's polymer and has a grip safety. Right, because you love yeah. grip safeties, which is love why you bought a 1911 <laughs> recently. Yeah, and put the grip safety in the vise and snapped it right off. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so funny because we're talking about different ways to disable a grip safety, and Andy Shan's like, let me show you the most refined way of doing it. So, yeah, you can cut the edge off here, or you can pin this, or you can just take pliers and break it off. <laughs> that was the best oh, way. <laughs> that was the best way. Yeah, done. So that's how we do them. I did that at Kingston's the other day when I was there fitting his safety. It was awesome. <laughs> um, okay, thanks for a great show. I'll probably it'll, it'll probably take me another six months to get caught up on all the episodes. Looking forward to it. So it'll be six months from now. Maybe we'll still be here. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Six but Steve will still be around yes. listening and finding out that, uh, oh, Owen's gone and Adriel and Kelly are there now. Yeah. Hi, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like XDs. Uh, Hello so from the past. There you go. Or the future. It depends Wait. on when he listens to it. Yeah. I'm not. What? TARDIS. Uh, Steve has Did a you PS. Call <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Steve says, P.S. Not sure if you guys cover more three gun stuff. No, not last week or the week before. Anyway, no, sorry. not at all. <laughs> but it has really taken the West by storm. There is literally a great match every weekend during the summer between BC and Alberta and Saskatchewan. So I bet you the Steve guy shoots with Adriel, but just doesn't know who Adriel is yet. Yeah, he'll be <laughs> listening along here in a little while and getting caught up going, Holy crap, Adriel's on Slamfire? <laughs> Well, actually, oh, so I emailed them from uh, from the show. I said, "Hey, I joined the crew in October 2015. I take part in, in Three Gun and Chaz just west of Edmonton. Uh, there's more Three Gun stuff coming up, so don't worry about it." And he said, uh, "As an avid Three Gunner, it's great news. Uh, I'll have to go to Chaz for a match, as you're only a few hours away. So he's not even that far from here. So uh, that's awesome. Hope to see him at some uh, future matches. Nice. Maybe he'll buy you a sandwich. You never know. <laughs> he might buy you a Subway. <laughs> Mm, sandwich. Cool. Who's got the next one? <laughs> Tre- Trevor, you need to get off the phone, buddy. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> it's from John L. Hello again, guys. In view of the upcoming Christmas season, really? It's only October, but okay. It hasn't even been Halloween yet. <laughs> eh, it is what it is. And as I have already given you five-star ratings, let me offer up a cartridge in a pear tree. Oh, you're awesome, uh, John. Ah, cartridge. I get it. Because you we're guys a gun are, show. You guys are and easily And gun shoot favorite. cartridges. <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are easily my favorite show. Keep up the great work. And as always, good night, Kelly. Regards, John. Good night, John. Cool. John. Next one is uh, also from John. Hi, guys. I really appreciate you having the guy from Vortex Scopes on. At the end, however, Matthew was giving instructions to where to move the sights on a pistol for sighting it in. He said exactly the correct procedure. Adriel, on the other hand, gave the exact opposite of uh, what to do. You move the rear sight in the direction that you want your shots to go, and the front sight opposite you want the shots to go. Adriel said it backwards, and I might have. Uh, other than that, you guys are doing a marvelous job, especially without Trevor there to keep you in line. However, I think Kelly does a great job keeping you guys wrangled in. So I might have said it backwards, or I might have said, like, again, there's two ways of approaching the sighting thing. You're either uh, moving the impact of the bullet, or you're moving the sights to the impacts that you're getting already. So... I don't. I might have messed it up. Though. No, Reg- I, regardless, no, I really re- regardless, what's written down in the email is actually backwards. The front Correct. sight follows your group. The rear sight is opposite of your group. Yeah. So, Adriel, you're not backwards. Uh, well, I believe this listener is. Well, unless the listener just quoted us backwards. Maybe okay. I was well, wrong. He says, Who knows? Well, the listener says. Yeah, Adriel we know what he says. We just read it. Uh, so this next one's from Craig. <laughs> 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 now who's keeping who in line? We're trying. Uh, you read it, Matthew. Hey, guys. I've started to search for an AR with a goal of eventually doing some three-gun. Just wondering what your thoughts on barrel length in regards to three-gun and ARs in general. I like the idea of the 10.5-inch range like the Mark 18, 
but would like uh, but would a 16 to 20 inch barrel be better for range and accuracy thanks craig it's funny we were just talking about this where we are yeah. was that on the other show that was on the bonus episode we ah, just covered this so and, craig uh, if you're a patreon yep. you will you'll hear that later and if yeah. not sorry all right moving on to <laughs> Oh, no? Mark 18, the Mark oh. 18 is actually a 10.3 and not a 10.5 because, you know, 0.2 of an inch matters, and I just like to be right. So uh, I think our opinions differ. Uh, the email I sent to Craig was short barrels shoot really good at short distances but not so good at long distances. Long barrels shoot really good at short and long distances, and that's why I have a long barrel. If you look at all the pros on the three-gun circuit, there's no one shooting anything less than 16, and most of them are shooting 18 and a half to 20. Yeah. Can I can I push my glasses up on my nose and and offer a, a different explanation of that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not that the long barrel is more accurate; it just adds more velocity. The short barrel is uh, t- technically on your barrel. You need stiffness out of it. So a short barrel and a long barrel. Uh, the shorter barrel will be stiffer. What the longer barrel will give you is a longer burn on on your uh, on your round, higher velocity, and that's going to give you higher hit factor on your long range shots because you don't need to guess at the uh, at the drop of the bullet as as uh, much as you do with the uh, shorter barrel. So I agree. I agree that the longer barrel for longer distances is is the way to go. I think for for Craig it would be. How long is long distance that you're shooting at your clubs locally there? Some clubs only have like 100 yards to play with, and if you've if, got one of those, the 10.5 is fine. Oh, yeah. If right. you're inside 100 yards, heck, if you're inside 200 yards, the 10.5 is going to be okay. Anything I disagree. Beyond, uh, you're allowed to. Any, <laughs> anything beyond that, uh, you're going to want more more barrel. I personally think that the 16-inch is the best compromise because – when you're running three gun, you need mobility as well, and you need to be able to get your gun in and out of ports sometimes. And uh, having a shorter gun does allow you to get in and out a little quicker. Mm. Yep. Mm, you know, sixteen is trash. Fourteen and a half is the only. <laughs> like, no. so, I think people argue about it too much. It's like they're 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 arguing about like a sixteen versus an eighteen. It's yeah. like there's not that much yeah. a difference between the two. Pick one that you like and go with it. I mean, you. Ultimately, you're you're building a gun that you want to have that you you want to enjoy. So build the one that you like. Um, if you're going to become super competitive, chances are you're not going to use the gun that you're about to buy now anyway. So buy the gun right. that you want and shoot with it. Have fun. If you decide that you want to get serious competitive, start looking at what the best guys are shooting and copy them. And buy that now. So you buy once instead of Well, twice. no, don't do that because what if he doesn't want to actually get into it serious? What if he just wants to buy a new gun and he wants the Mark 18 because that's what he wants? I'm not going to stand in the way of his happiness. The man should buy a Mark 18. Uh, yeah, I've had two and I sold them, but um, they are phenomenal. They Every time we did a class, I always ran the Mark 18 because it's just so easy, right? But um, question do you guys think that uh, a Mark 18 with a 10.3 inch barrel will shoot as tight a group as another Daniel Defense with a 16 and a half inch barrel at 100 and 200 meters? Absolutely. Same ammo, same optic. The only difference is one gun has a 10.3 inch barrel and the other gun has a 16 inch barrel. Adriel says Absolutely. yes. Matthew? Matthews, put the mute button on. Oh, mute right. button. Sorry, 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 sorry. I had it backwards. Yeah, no, absolutely. The ten, the ten point five will shoot more accurately. In fact, in my opinion, and uh, the science should back me up on that because, like Adriel said, for the same diameter, uh, you have a shorter barrel. That means it's actually stiffer. Um, you'll get less barrel whip, and you will lose a bit of velocity. So your group will print lower, but it should be tighter. I'm saying the same because they're the same quality of barrel, and there's they're. Like in in terms of the the sniffness on it, that'll be a a secondary factor to the the quality of the of the barrel for the AR. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. Should probably have uh, Brian on for this. It's it's fun to uh, it's fun to argue about stuff like this, hmm. though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I I will go on record and say I disagree with you guys based on uh, my own experiences with my ARs, but I could be wrong, and maybe those uh, groups that I shot were fluky. But the 10.3 and the 10.5 inch barrel ARs that I had. We're, we're nowhere near as good as the uh, even So did the you shoot the exact half. same ammo between the... Well, this the, is it. I did Did you right? have the same scope That's... in the same bench in the same... Yeah, same, so, same, yeah. same scope, same ammo. Yeah. But uh, the barrels were all from different manufacturers. Right, So yeah. there's a variable there that has to be considered. Absolutely. That's why I, would, I gave you guys the scenario of two Daniel Defense rifles, one with a 10.3 and one with a 16. Here's what you and, do, is you go to bullets by the inch. You can just Google that, and they have actually... It. 
they have actually, and I'm talking to the listeners, not you, Trevor. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> the listeners can go there, and th- this this uh, uh, organization actually took several different types of guns and shot them, and then started taking the the barrels down with a hacksaw, and then re uh, recrowning them inch by inch, and they they recorded in charts all of the accuracy and all of the velocities. And you can see, you can kind of use those charts to find the barrel that best suits your needs. And if I remember correctly, it was somewhere around the 16-inch mark that all of the groups became the most, uh, it was the best accuracy for the for the velocity. And then as they got smaller, accuracy stayed pretty nominal um, and velocity started to drop off. Well, That's and... A- and, and- in terms of barrel length, there's a couple of uh, a couple of different things that uh, that they take into consideration. Like Colt went with a, a really weird length, and I believe that's because they found it was an accuracy node for a couple yep. of different rounds. Yeah. So that that's that's an example of of like that, you're not going to get very much choice though for that. But what you can do is try a different uh, a couple of different kinds of rounds and see what uh, what works really accurately in your gun. And it was a ridiculous like odd number, like fifteen point seven or something. Hmm. Yeah, I, Colt, I can't remember Colt what the exact did. number yeah. was. Well, that's interesting, Matthew. I uh, I said that I was familiar with the website, but I guess I'm not as familiar as I thought because I thought that they only had data on velocity, not You're velocity. You're right. I'm on here now. It is just velocity. There must be yeah. another website that has the accuracy as well. So I will search for that, and if I can find it, I'll mention it before the end of the show. Because I've, seen, I, I've, I've seen a couple of articles like that where yeah. they chop the inches off the barrel and, and even – uh, start with a much longer length than this, and they found the same thing. The accuracy was about the same uh, uh, as they chopped it down, but their velocity started dropping. And uh, you know that I think it's primarily like how much more velocity do you want after after ten inches with an AR? You're 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 dropping off pretty quick. Uh, but I mean the the difference between an eighteen inch at thirty three hundred FPS and a, a ten inch at twenty seven hundred. Isn't that much? You you lose a lot of that top end velocity, like in the first hundred yards, because uh, you know that's where your bullet loses a ton of that velocity, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, we can't agree on air barrel lengths. I I I say go longer, and you're not going to limit yourself. You're not gonna you're gonna have accuracy and velocity, and all the th- pro three gun guys are running long barrels, so they must be doing it for a reason. I say buy the gun you want. Well, those three gun pro guys, they they are uh, running them quite a bit farther out in the U.S. They've got right. they've got some really long shots. Mm-hmm. So for those guys, I would say, yeah, go for like an eighteen inch barrel because that extra velocity is going to help with those long shots because your misjudging of distance won't be as as crucial because your bullet's going faster. Mm-hmm. Cool. Anything else to add, Kelly? You got anything? Just uh, what you, just basically what you said as well. I've been listening to uh, the Three Gun podcast, and that's exactly it. All the pro guys are going with uh, 16 or longer, mm. and it's because they are shooting at longer distances and they're more accurate. So, and he can also build his AR if he wants, and then he can actually get exactly what he wants. And multiple uppers. Yes. That's what's awesome about it. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Well, um, listeners, if you would love to hear us fight more about any other topic, <laughs> you can uh, spur on the conversation by sending an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. And remember, everything is a competition, and I feel like I won this one. <laughs> <laughs> iTunes reviews. Kelly, you want to take the iTunes review? Uh, No, not really. All right. <laughs> Adriel, because I can tell Matthew's researching because he let me get away with that last cheap shot. <laughs> yeah, I heard busy. that. I am researching, though. <laughs> I, I knew it. I, I, I haven't be found... wrong before I the have, end of the show. <laughs> I haven't found one website, but I have found three that are not that I'm going to... I'm not going to suggest people go find them because they're pretty poorly put together. But I have found three so far where experts have said that accuracy has nothing to do with barrel length. Well, what about the fact that you get sight radius? Are barrel. you running? Are you running iron sights, or are you running a red dot? Uh, no, on, on Trevor's AR, he's got an iron sight out on the end of his barrel. That's yeah. That's why do, he, that's does he long use barrel. it? <laughs> no. not, if you're running a red dot or you're running a scope, there is no barrel you're radius. Right. You need like, to worry about. Right. Yep. Right. Yes, I will concede to that point, sir. Yes, as you this should. <laughs> do you want me to read the iTunes review? No, I've already passed it off to Adriel. Oh, you okay. Have sorry. To doing your research. All right. Hello. Keep- Prove you wrong or later. Too late. I already well, proved you wrong. The show notes here. <laughs> <laughs>
Go ahead, Adriel. Uh, the re- this review is from Donks Out for Jeremy, which is an euphemism for something else. Uh, store is, is Canada. Five stars, of course. Title, Quality Canadian Content. Review, I actually installed this terrible piece of software that is iTunes on my computer and have risked getting a host of computer diseases just to leave this review. Oh, sweet. So you know I mean it when I say this show is fantastic. (laughs) I I love how he left this on iTunes. (laughs) It's probably not there anymore. (laughs) They they cut it down, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I look forward to it each week and, and tune in the first thing every Friday morning on my commute. Overall, I agree with almost everything on the show, except for Trevor's views of the 1911s. I feel like they get a bad rap mostly due to his hobbit thumbs. Uh, I find myself learning a little something each week. Adriel was a great addition to the show last year, and it is refreshing to hear a familiar accent instead of whatever crazy accent it is the rest of you guys have. It's called East Coast. (laughs) Right? The East Coast accent, yeah. Can't you tell? I've got such a huge accent. Can't you tell, by? (laughs) Uh, <laughs> Kelly also adds some respectability to the squad, and I've enjoyed her being on the shows. Tre- uh, Matthew and Trevor, you guys are great. Keep up the great work. All in all, this show is tops, and I hope it continues for a long, long time. I give it two 1911 triggers and one gold star. <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. Uh, thanks, man. Hmm. I don't one know your real star. name, but thanks. Love the yeah, gold stars. Man. Yeah, teachers love gold stars. Absolutely. Um, all right. So that's awesome. We have uh, how many now? We have 141 uh, five-star rating. 141 five-star rating. <laughs> that's the second one, but it's the first one that you caught tonight. Oh, I must have been uh, researching yeah. or not listening to you. <laughs> Perhaps. They both are within the realm of possibility. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I know that you, you're risking infecting your computer, but it really does help the show get noticed on the iTunes feeds. So please head on over there and leave us a review. We've got 100, 141 <laughs> five stars so far, uh, 110 Canadian, 28 U.S., one Australian, one U.K., one Lithuania, and one from Belgium. Oh, and thank you to the listener from Lithuania who wrote in last week. Uh, yeah, that was the show, cool. but I, I did hear that, and thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, make it funny, and you might hear on the show. That's a lie. We read them all. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much to all those who already have left us reviews. This takes us to shout-outs. Kelly, you have a shout-out? Well, it was left in there from last week, but sure, I got one. All right. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Thomas Brandt, uh, Mr. Uzi, congratulations, uh, awesomeness, and you guys will figure it out later what that's all about. All, all right, right then. I got a Thomas shout-out, too. Actually, a Thomas shout-out and a Jay Hines shout-out. Jay Hines called me out um, and said, how did this go? It got really out of control really fast. He would shave his beard mm-hmm. if I shoot an SKS. Oh, Yeah. You guys oh, are going to yeah. get dressed up and so, dresses. Yeah. And... It was weird. Jay, Jay Hines has probably the best beard in the universe, and he he's does. had it forever. So for him to shave this beard is a pretty big thing. So I thought, okay, well, we need to tie this into the charity shoot because charity. So here's the deal. I I will shoot the SKS. He will shave his beard. We've both agreed to wear dresses during this humiliating thing to make it even more humiliating. And then we I like how you both agreed to that. It's like, hey, do you want to yeah. wear a dress? Yeah, I kind of do. Do you want to wear a dress? Yeah, yeah I, I, I kind of do kinda too. Like that, should, Matthew, should we wear we, a dress? We should. We. I'll, I'll wear a dress. <laughs> I'll you wear a dress. dress. Oh, yeah, I'll certainly wear a dress. All right, let's yeah. get dresses. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was his idea or my idea, but the dresses <laughs> were it, the dress idea came from him or I. Yes, That's, and I don't know why. So, uh, I guess oh, I bet you, I know why. Well, it's not the first dress. <laughs> I was uh, I was on the side of the road oh God, in Beldoon once. <laughs> Here's another my... ginger beer story. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was gonna ask, ginger we beer. Were, it's a dress we were, on the side of Beldoon. <laughs> we were raising money for the, my class. We decided to raise money for the Katrina victims, and so uh, we did all kinds of silly things that involved raising money at my humiliating expense. So I I would give the kids uh, goals, and if they met their goal, I would do something humiliating. So on this goal. Uh, I was to stand out in front of the school in a pink dress with a sign that says "Honk if you think I'm pretty." I almost got beaten up; like it was bad. Like they don't, <laughs> they don't take kindly to cross dressers in, in the community of Beldoon. Okay, okay. Did so, you get any honks? <laughs> I got no honks. 
<laughs> I got I got lots of salutes <laughs> and huh. one guy's phone number. <laughs> so it was uh. creepy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, we decided we would do this wearing dresses to you know encourage participation from the listeners. Here's what we're going to do: after I shoot the SKS, uh, we're going to raffle it off and right. raise, and the money will get donated to whatever charity is chosen for uh, next year's charity event in the London area or wherever it's going to be in Ontario for sure. So Rick is uh, Rick is involved. Kelly, I believe you're involved again. I am. So <laughs> you are now. Yeah. <laughs> You've been, volunt- you've been voluntold. You so know what anyway, that means, Kevin. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, well, guess what? So, I don't have an SKS, and I absolutely refuse to buy an SKS. So, Thomas Bryant, Mr. Ooze, he's like, dude, oh, really? I got I got you. I got you. So, he's he's getting some stuff on the go, and then he's going to mail me an SKS. Aww. So, we're going to videotape me shooting it, and then we'll, uh, we'll videotape... Um, yeah, yeah, you know, Jay, shoot Jay? at Jay. Yeah, Jay. Uh, here's what we could do. We could do all this at the charity event. That makes the if, most amount of sense. And that's... if the person who wins it will present it to them at the charity event. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we were talking about. Stacy and I also vol- volunteered to get the dresses as well. I hope of you course know you guys did. Of course you guys did. That's wonderful of you. Yeah. Just trying to help out. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Something that looks good with chest hair. Mm. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Gotta show it off. Oh yes. Yeah. So I want it. All right. Moving on to the Patreon supporters section of the show. We'd like to thank our newest Patreon supporters, Jason Philp, who chose two two two, which is awesome. Nice. Uh, Twelve gauge would have been nice too. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> and request that we add a pheasant in a pine tree. Uh, and also Morgan S has come on board this week as the newest Patreon supporters. Uh, and good news, there there are now two. Uh, bonus content materials for you to uh, to take part in. One is a quick video, and tonight we recorded our first ever bonus material with our first ever uh, Patreon supporter. Well, I guess well tonight wasn't our yeah tonight was our first bonus episode. How's that? Yeah. There so you go. tonight was our first bonus episode, and it was with our first Patreon, uh, Mike. So check that out, Patreon Patreonies. You are the Patreonies now. Patri- em- yeah, Patreonies. Yeah, all right, that'll em- work. Em- embrace it. Not so patronesses. Pa- no, pa- pa- patroni. <laughs> They're the Patreonies. Patreonies. So thanks to all our Patreonies, and uh, yeah, so we have put out our first uh, bonus content, and we're going to do one a month, right, guys? Sure, that sounds sure. ambitious. Right. Let's see we if can that happens. Check our calendar. And- yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. It's when when Adriel sends out the reminder, it's important to look at the reminder, right, guys? Well, apparently it goes to my email account, and I check that like once a day or so. There you Randomly. go. Just like, <laughs> just like just like the the topic for the bonus episode was in the Facebook message that you were on that you didn't read. I don't know how to read. <laughs> oh no, that's me. <laughs> oh right, that's me. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So moving on, uh, everyone. It's important to join one of our national firearms associations or multiple ones, whichever ones you see fit that you want to join. Uh, we support your right to join them all. Uh, check us out on the Gun Owners of Canada. They're awesome. They sent us a challenge coin, and by us, I mean me. But, you know, <laughs> when, I tell you what, Thanks. Matthew, when, when you're here for the three-gun, if you can find it, you can take it home, and then you can hold it for a while. I don't, sure. All right. You, uh, no, go, you go with your first instinct of, I don't care. <laughs> you were <gonna> say. <laughs> uh, also, check us. Care. No, not that I don't care that GOC <laughs> sent us a honor, or a, a, what's it called again? Challenge coin. <laughs> Challenge I think that's coin. cool. I just, I don't particularly yeah. feel the need to have it. So right. put it under a Apparently, pillow. Trevor also, does, so. though. Trevor does. Kelly, well, Kelly, everything's <laughs> a contest, Kelly. <laughs> Like us on Facebook because again everything's a contest and we have more likes than any other any other pro gun podcast, right, guys? That that's true. Sure, right? sure. Uh, no. No. Well, there are a couple of others that are done. Oh, never mind. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, Do we so have more than any at least Canadian pro gun podcast. Yeah, we're oh. winning there. Okay, we well, winning if we're winning there. there, then we're winning in Canada, and that means we're national champions. We are. Yeah, no, keep going. Well, no, <laughs> actually, stop. That's why I interrupted yeah. you. <laughs> one thousand five, one thousand five. I just want to end the show, guys. Keep I going. Just wanna, I just We're almost there. It. We're almost there. One thousand five hundred forty-one likes. Get 
We're getting there. We have 114 thumbs up. Like that's a lot of thumbs up. That's a lot. Of thumbs. I thought this joke was was like this bit was getting old, but man, it just keeps people it keep keeps, sending them. So we're gonna growing. add them. Yeah. 114 thumbs up. 21 gold stars and counting. Two flukes. Four manity flippers. So that's two manity, right? Because a manity only has two flippers. Sure. Or the front and the back. I'm not a scientist. You gotta shoot cow. at least two of them to get that many flippers. That's, that's I'm okay with that. Two kangaroo <laughs> thumbs. They don't have thumbs. Uh, one safe space. One HK logo. Uh, two hobbit thumbs. Awesome. Five duck bills. When did the duck bills come in? <laughs> Must have been last week. Two squirrels nuts. Two 1911 triggers because they are the best triggers. A cartridge in a pear tree and a pheasant in a pine tree. Oh my God! Stop sending us <laughs> random stuff. Well, that's because I mentioned it last week. I'm like, I hope we don't get a, a, a partridge in a pear tree. And then what do we get this week? A cartridge. Yeah. <laughs> a cartridge in a, a pear cartridge tree. in a pheasant. Yeah. So. <laughs> of course we did. Yeah. Uh... Awesome. All right, everybody. So um, I'm Ron Burgundy. Oh, that's a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun. I said I just have to remind myself of that. That's right. Shop with the ginger beer. We're never to discuss ginger beer <laughs> ever again. Ginger beer is off the list. I love <laughs> No more ginger beer for you. No more ginger beer. Not to be discussed. All right. Let me know when you guys are ready. I'm ready. How about everybody else? Everybody else is ready, too. Hello, and welcome to episode 176 of Slam Fire Radio for October 14th, 2016. I'm one of your hosts, Trevor the Frelate. I'm another one of your hosts, Matthew the Warning Shot. Wow. Adriel? Hello, Adriel. Adriel messed it up. Adriel? Thought you said they were ready. Well, I wasn't listening. I thought you were listening. And I'm frosty. <laughs> <laughs> where's A- Where's Adriel? Adriel, check your mute button. Did he go to the bathroom or something? <laughs> are we no, this or what are we doing? Is this, this is a is show? An out. She's, no, no. We'll, we'll redo it. We'll restart. There he is. This right. is an outtake, though. It's oh, it certainly out. is. Adriel. Hello. Yes. Did, hey, did, welcome did, back. Did, did you go to the bathroom or something? <laughs> we started the show. <laughs> we thought we were all ready. <laughs> we're already on to what we didn't gun. <laughs> oh. We're oh. next, but then we were gone. <laughs> yeah. I covered oh. your intro, though. It's fine. Not the way for the outtakes. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, crap. Let's do this. Yep. Which part? The intro? No, we're yeah, going to yeah, we'll, we'll restart. <laughs> wait for your cue, buddy. Just sit back, wait for you. Yeah, the show. Yeah. All right. Here we go.